What's up, everybody? Welcome to Nemesis Insider, where we interview your favorite creators on Team Nemesis. And I am alone this week, you know. Um, obviously, I'm James Autumn. I'm one of your hosts. Uh, Vengeance Gaming had a family medical emergency that he had to take care of. I can't talk too much about it, but things are proceeding fine. Everyone is getting monitored. Uh, his his family's going to be okay. So that's the good news. We're going to wish him well. And yeah, lonely host. Hi, Mass. <laughs> And uh, this week, we do have a special guest from the retro world, a man of many hats, currently wearing a Nemesis hat, Team Nim, you gotta love that, is uh, Chard Monk. Welcome to the show. Oh, you got a Twitch hat, too. Look at that. Oh, I got so many, I got too many freaking hats. <laughs> You'd think I was losing my hair with, with all the hats that I have. What's going on? What's going on, James? Thank you so much for having me, man. I'm super pumped to be here. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Now, our first, I believe, question is from Sinistar77 in chat. Who the heck is Chard Monk? No, why don't you answer that for him? I... <laughs> Sinistar, you're, you're, you're a Chard Monk. That's a running joke between me and Sinistar. He's a good friend of mine. Um, I, As uh, James said, I am a retro streamer here on the wonderful world of Twitch. Um, we do... RPGs mainly when we do do any kind of the retro community, but we also, uh, from time to time, like to do some of that spooky stuff. We play some of them scary games too, retro and uh, current, because um, I like to scare the heck out of myself. What can I say? I love a good jump scare. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we do uh, we do two hundred percent retro achievement uh, runs, which. If you don't know what retro achievement is, uh, it is a website that is essentially like. The PlayStation 5 and the Xbox achievements that you get when you play on the game and the little things pop up. But this is dedicated and directed towards uh, retro games. So they do a whole platform and they have a slew of programmers and designers that come on and create these, these difficult achievements. And then you try and do them. And then you get badges and points for them. And you don't, you just get bragging rights, really. There's, it's not like you get anything super cool other than a i played battle toads which is arguably one of the harder retro games and i 200 percented it on top of that so you get this nifty little badge on your website it's really cool that is that's really really amazing so it all links up to the game or do you actually just say hey i did the achievement here can i get it no there's a whole program that actually runs with the with the program that you're playing the game on and it talks to the website so when you pop something it'll pop up on the screen saying you were rewarded this achievement and then it directly goes into the website and will directly show up on there as well so you obviously get bragging rights right uh so what, what's your score or grade on this website oh. for all your all of your achievements from all games listen <laughs> there are people out there that uh that have great fantastic scores i i just i don't know why i do it i don't i don't do it for like to be the greatest RA player in the world, I think I do it to add an extra challenge to the games I'm playing. And when we play long game or hard games, sometimes you almost get everything done while you're playing it because the difficulty level is where it's at. And then sometimes we just go, you know what? I need like two more things. I might as well get the badge on it. And then you do the two more things, which are stupid. They're, they're stupid to do, but you do them anyways. Like, I don't know, do things blindfolded, do things damage lists. Don't take a hit throughout the entire game, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. But <clears throat> whenever I do an RPG, which is pretty often, when I do one that's blind and I've never played before, I will look at the set list for it on Retro Achievements. And if it's something that I can do in a single playthrough, we'll usually go for the badge of it just, just to have it. Um, my, my goal is to try and get as many RPG badges as I can uh, on stream. And, and I take you know, take the the viewers in my community with me to do that. That is so cool. I mean, that sounds very involved. And obviously the makers of this website and program have such a dedication to retro games to where they actually figure out what's considered achievement worthy. Sometimes games like uh, just throw out, hey, you finished the intro. Here's an achievement. Do they have similar things like that too? Or do they actually like oh, yeah. kind of uh, narrow it down to what is considered an achievement? It's de it's depending on the game, and it also depends on the programmer. There's there is a slew of programmers that work on the site, so it's not just like one or two people. There's a bunch of people 
and they will actually some of them will actually submit and there's even like streamers or play or, or players that will will say hey this would be a cool achievement for this game and they give it to the programmers and they'll look it over they'll see if it's even possible repetitively like if you do it once then you know blah whatever but if if you can do it repetitively but it is difficult to do then they'll add it to the website more often than not um so yeah it's it's just more or less these these people and these this is a what they do is a thankless job. I don't want to go on a retro achievement kick with these guys, but the stuff that they come up with is absolutely amazing. And some of the things they pick are just like stupid hard. But when you get it, I'll tell you what, it is one of the better feelings of the world to do that with your community. I spent nine hours, I kid you not, nine hours on one achievement in Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And the minute I got that achievement, we got it. I I had to take a walk. I left my stream <laughs> to go outside and and scream into the the great wide open. And then I came back. My my you know my chat was flooded with GGs because these people you know they come along with you for the ride. So it's it's kind of like they're getting the achievement too. It's <laughs> it's really neat. Oh, and and they are saying you're at the top eight point six percent ranked on the website i'm assuming and then uh Centris says but you are 100 percent awesome how how kind is that oh my god love you love you Sinistress. love you club sin <laughs> love you too <clears throat> you guys are too kind that's fantastic it, it, it you know the numbers look good when they write them down <laughs> but if you go to the website and actually look at it he's i'm like top 300,000 or some some no I'm like I'm way down there cuz I'm again I'm not like dedicated there's like Throg TT TV and and Game Squad Squad who is Game Squad Squad's a, a good friend of mine he is number 1 in all of RA he has he is number 1 he is the best in the world not in the United States in the world in RA that guy has more points than my then my hands and feet and teeth can count. There is just, it's, it's ridiculous. And I still think I'm like in the four digit level of points. <laughs> it's pretty good. I, I mean, it's, it's fun. I'm just, I'm not as dedicated to it as I'd, I'd like to be. Thank you. 26 out of 18, uh, 26, 18 out of uh, 30, 30,150 ranked. I guess that's not too bad. That's a lot of players. So to get up out of the tens of thousands ranks into, you know, the, a little bit closer to single digit thousands that's that's still impressive as all heck right there that's that's it's that's pretty good when again when it's on paper it looks great it looks <laughs> great on paper so speaking of achievements was that castlevania one the hardest that you've had to do to date or it was the first one i did i bit off a, a pretty big bite going into it and i i had never played symphony of the night before and i decided to challenge myself for the first time to do retro achievements on that and it was, it took me, I think, three months to, to badge it completely. Um, and that one was tough. But I'll tell you what, we did, we did Ninja Gaiden. We did <laughs> Battletoads. Uh, we badged all of those. And those, those two were e easily the hardest two games that it were to badge. There was some, some stuff that went along with it. I just think, I think Symphony of the Night just has a lot of long-winded achievements that need to be done. There's one where you have to play as Richter throughout the entire game and not die. It's called the uh, oh. Richter Richter Gaiden. You have to beat every <laughs> you have to beat every boss and not die once. And that was the last achievement we got. And I did it in two hours during a charity event, and we won it. Oh, that's crazy! It's it took me a long time to learn that game enough <laughs> to not have to die when I played. <laughs> Now, the way they set up retro gaming now is so much nicer because I remember back in the day we would go to the grocery store as kids and get Symphony of the Night from the from the grocery store, rent it for the weekend, and mm -hmm. guaranteed it would lock up at some point, corrupting all saves, and you'd have to start over. So just the Scratch fact that you were able life. to do it. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> the fact that you were yeah. able to get through is crazy. Right. I When I... <laughs> I'm old. I uh, I always got cartridges. That was what we we rented on when we go to the grocery store. I'm glad that we have a grocery store rental story because when I was younger, my parents would reward me uh, with a a game rental every weekend if I got 100 percent of my spelling test. So every time we do that, we go to Bel Air, which was our local grocer in the area, and I get to select one game and bring it home with me. I had a Nintendo and a Sega Genesis 
growing up. Now, I'm a Super Nintendo kid. I may have had a Sega Genesis, but I am a Super Nintendo kid. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you had to blow in the cartridge like you do and make sure that it wasn't corrupt by the last person that played it. Um, all of them were pretty pretty successful. I don't can't, can't remember any games that we got that were totally blipped out, but I'll tell you, there were a few there that were look, look a little <laughs> questionable when you pop them in the console. <laughs> Yeah, we would also get the uh, Nintendo 64 carts, and mm. those would always be kind of the same corruption because we'd get, like, three controllers because it'd be me and my brother and two of my cousins, and we would uh, get WrestleMania 2000, No Mercy, just something we could all play together and uh, just beat up on each other on. And every single time, it was almost guaranteed that, you know, you were going to get a corrupted game or the cartridge would just be like this nice bronze rust on, oh, on the inside, yeah. you know, where the contacts were, because you could tell Ow. somebody was spitting <laughs> their Mountain Dew into the cartridge. <laughs> they were blowing into it, but they had a mouthful of water. Yeah. Come on, guys. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, we, we always played, you know, we did the Golden Eye, of course. Oh, yeah. Uh, we did uh, Mario Kart when it was on the Super Nintendo and... And all kinds of stuff, but I, I, when I was younger, I was playing them RPGs, man. I had a, I had a buddy growing up, and he, he and I would would be rocking RPGs all the time. It's where my my love for Final Fantasy was uh, grown from there. So, so what was your first proper RPG like on your earliest console? I'd have to say Final Fantasy One. Okay, when it was released, because that's how old I am. Yes, <laughs> um, yeah, I played Final Fantasy One on the on the Nintendo first uh, first game that was released. Um, back way back in 87 i think is when it was released and god that game was so tough <laughs> like, when you're when you're you know nine or ten years old trying to figure out how to navigate a game of that caliper <laughs> yeah you know especially when you're impatient like i am i am the most impatient person in the world so you know we try to bum rush into the game and it it takes a lot of grinding you gotta you gotta grind through all that stuff and if you don't god help you <laughs> Gotta yeah. help you. I don't. I don't want to like cause a debate, but I, I want to say the first RPG for me was uh, Zelda Two, because mm -hmm. I okay. saw this beautiful golden cartridge on the wall at a game shop, and you know, all summer uh, they said I could have one game. My grandma said I could have one game. I saw that one. I picked it. Hated it. Of course, I I was hey, like I was like have, eight you or watch nine. Your mouth on that. <laughs> Shroomy is a huge Zelda fan, and I we might get some backlash from that. I, I, I that held back on again. this story with him because <laughs> you know I, I didn't I didn't I wouldn't have prefaced it as well as I have now, saying that I was eight or nine in my defense. I didn't Fair. know about the hidden walls. That I didn't have a guide. I couldn't afford the guide. Yeah. I couldn't afford a Nintendo right. Power. You know to pop that up and be like oh you get through this by doing this step this step this step and mm -hmm. i also didn't know anything about town vendors and different things like that i was just a kid that saw a golden cartridge picked yeah. it up and i was so frustrated <laughs> man i i played we rented we borrowed we borrowed uh the first zelda from a family friend of ours and uh we were playing it and i i had gotten to a to a level where you can get the uh the warp whistle, right? Where like or later on in the game, and I I'd never made it that far in my life. And there was a thunderstorm rolling through during this time. And uh my sister, I'm I'm the youngest of of three. I have two older sisters. My sister came in and was like, if you don't turn that off and we get hit by lightning, it's gonna delete the entire data on the game. And oh, I was man. like <laughs> You know, I'm like six or seven. I I'm, no, we're not no, we're gonna we're pushing through this. We're not gonna <laughs> stop. And they turned it off on me. And I never, I hadn't played it. I was so upset because, you know, that game doesn't save. It erases everything. So, so <laughs> when 2 came out, I was like, oh, I'll give this another shot. And I played it. And I was like, what in the world is going on in this game? This is, this is not what I purchased at all. <laughs> and I, I discounted that game for years until I think two years ago we played it. I played it. And uh, I beat it. And I got to I gotta say that, like you said, at seven, eight-year-old, you know, don't not getting it. I now have, <laughs> I have 40 years to appreciate this game <laughs> for what it really was. It's actually, it's, it's a fun game if you can, it's, it's just, you know, it was so strange from the top-down, well, I mean, you know, top-down Zelda that you're used to playing. 
because they went and did the same thing linked to the past which is my my favorite zelda game in the series where it's the, the old top down on the slash and walk around not the side scrolling and the and the random encounters thing which being an rpg fan you think i'd be all about that right i'd be excited about that but it just it was that whole you know not my zelda you know back at eight years old so giving it another shot we finished it up and i uh i, I grew to actually appreciate and uh, and have kind of a soft spot for zelda too so and and i can thank shrewy for that because he, <laughs> he he talked me off the ledge on how bad it was <laughs> that's awesome yeah the older you get the more you understand the mechanics and then going back to that game though it's like did they market this for kids? Because this is tough even as an adult, right. but I understand it now. But as a kid, I could see like why I was so frustrated and just wanted a, another Super Mario. <laughs> right, of course. Well, a lot of those games back in the day, and you can you don't have to quote me on this because I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but a lot of that stuff like, like Zelda, Zelda 2, Castlevania 2, which is terribly translated. If you play the American version of and not get the translated version that's terribly translated. They were designed for you to call Nintendo Power's hotline to get tips and tricks on how to get past it. So they like intentionally made that stuff difficult so that kids would ask their parents, hey mom, can you call the power line, which would, you know, at the time was what, $3 a minute or something like that? <laughs> yeah. And they'd have these, <laughs> these, cool pro, these cool pros telling you, hey, you know, you get past, you get a dude in a leather jacket calling you up to him and be like, yeah, you need to beat Mario. This is what you do it or whatever. And you just, you know, write it all down and stuff. But it, uh, they like intentionally left a lot of information out so that you were kind of forced to be like, mom, dad, let me, you know, let me call Nintendo hotline so we can finish this stuff out. But of course my parents were like, you either finish, get figure it out or you, you know, you wait until you're 40 and try again, which I did. And then. I beat it, so I didn't, need, I didn't even need Nintendo Hotline. I just had to wait a couple years to dive back into that game. So. <clears throat> Fantastic. <laughs> so, uh, Sir JB in chat asks, uh, what are your thoughts on the teaser for the new Zelda game, which I believe is called Tears of the Kingdom? I'm excited. I'm, I'm a pretty big Dark Souls fan. I know which, you know, everybody calls what they call Breath of the Wild, Souls of the Wild, or whatever, you know, the whole thing. I, and, and crucify me here, I have not played Breath of the Wild yet. I have, I just got a Switch, Ooh. right? So I'm, like, pumped to play Breath of the Wild. I haven't had the opportunity to do it. But I've heard nothing but great things about it. And upon watching, watching the stuff and, and hearing the responses that it's, you know, the same thing but with a two next to it, I'm in. I'm in for the difficulty of it. I'm in for for the changes. Uh, I think Kronk talked about it in a in, in I think one of our chats that she was playing Breath of the Wild, and she didn't like it at first because there were things that you needed to do to get past like the snowy mountain. I think she said, and you have to like put on clothes to be warm to play it. And when I found that out, because again I've not played it, I just only heard you know secondhand knowledge from it. I was like, do you have to be prepared for elements and stuff like that? Let's effing go i am all about like trying to figure out how to get past puzzles in that kind of sense where you have to go and get something to get past it i i love that stuff so if it's if it's the same <coughs> but better let's let's go i'm i'm 100 on board for for anything zelda related i'm a big fan of like wind waker i know wind waker got a lot of got a lot of flack for being you know the cell shaded kid zelda floating around in the ocean I thought that was great. I thought that game was spectacular. It was cute. It was fun. It looked amazing, but I'm a comic book nerd. So I guess sign me up to anything that looks like a comic book. I'll be 100% on board. But I totally dug uh, that one. And I think, I bet Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be just as good. I'm, I'm, st I'm, I'm stoked. I think it's going to be cool. Now that I own a Switch, I'm excited for it because I played Breath of the Wild on Wii U. I don't know how much the Switch version differs, but mm -hmm. hopefully it's a little bit more intuitive to play with because that Wii U controller just kind of, you know. I heard it's kind of kind of conkly, kind of walky. I, I I stopped at Wii. We we got a Wii when it came out. I actually bought Twilight Princess before I even had a Wii. That's how bad I wanted <laughs> to play it. So we sat on that game for months before we were like, okay, I think we have enough to actually go out and get the system to play it on. So I, I it's it's a great, I love Zelda. I think it's a really good series. Fantastic. And uh, Doc Plays, 
which is a brother from another mother in Australia, says, As a retro streamer, how does Charred Monk feel about emulators like using save states, etc.? I have no problem with emulators. Um, I know it's the dirty E world uh, word amongst some of the, the retro community, but not with the ones that I hang out with. I, I think it's a great way to be able to play some of the games of the past for the people that can't, um, can't get their hands on a console or can't get their hands on anything to be able to use it. Emulator, I barely knew her. I love it. <laughs> um, but uh, I, save states for me... <laughs> I, I won't be I won't be that guy. I'm not gonna be the elitist that's like you can't save state in the game. Save state in the game, man. If you're having fun and you're at a tough part and you're trying to practice it or you're trying to learn it, save state your life out. Go for it. When I do retro achievements, I do them on hardcore mode because I'm an idiot and I like to do things more difficult than they need to be. So when we do hardcore mode, you can't do save states. They don't allow you. They actually shut it off in the emulator so you cannot use it at all. Oh, wow. So, I don't personally use save states, but I absolutely have no issue with other people. They're just like, I save state the heck out of it. We'll joke about it and be like, well, you know, you beat the game like you're like a real person if you could. But I, use them. Use them and, and get it done. I, I've been guilty of using save states to play through stuff, just to, pra to practice it so I can get the achievement. You know, I just have to start over from the beginning. So save states get, save save state your your blessed little heart out you do you do whatever makes makes the game happy for you you don't have to play everything on the hardest mode unless you really really want to do that and i do respect people who do play those harder difficulties but i also love how the game space uh has this accessibility feature of various different things from color palettes for people who may be colorblind to extra buttons or skipping puzzles if there's some sort of ability problem there. So, you know, safe states could possibly fall in the very accessibility category and offer people a way to play a game they previously just simply couldn't do before. So, right. I'm all I about mean, we play games for we play games to have a good time, right? I play yeah. games to have a good time. My my level of having a good time may be different than your level of having a good time. Maybe you just want to see the story. Maybe you just want to play it and watch the story unfold. There's a game, there's a new game that my my podcast, my, my podcast team, uh, Sinistar and a couple other people were playing called Tunic. And they have the ability to shut off damage in the game if you are getting stuck on something just so you can play through it without you know, without dying or, or the, the fear of it. So you can enjoy the game. And, and there's a lot of puzzles in the game. So it's not like you don't shut it off and then the game's super easy mode and you're just walking <laughs> through it. You shut it off, but then you have to solve other puzzles and other things that get in your way. So if, if you're like me, then, you know, you want to take the slings and barbs to the face because that's, for some reason, I like video game pain. I'm <laughs> a masochist when it comes to that. But if you just want to solve the puzzles and play the game as a puzzle game, you can do that, and and emulators allow you to do that. They allow you to to change the way it looks, or change the way it pl plays, or save state somewhere that's difficult. And if you just want to have fun playing the game, just have a good time doing it. Don't let anybody tell you that you need to play. You need to play this on hard, or you didn't play it at all. Hor horse crap. If you saw the ending and it's at the end, you beat the game. You had fun. Then you played it. You had a good time. <clears throat> Yeah, I think now the streamer space is a lot easier on that because when I would play games and I have a problem with numbers and math, it's always been a thing since a kid. So like, I love playing games like Sherlock Holmes uh, Chapter 1 is a recent one. I really love it because there's puzzle solving, case solving, different stuff. But back in the day when I first started streaming, it was always just uh, people coming in and, and sending out negativity over me doing some sort of accessibility feature. Or if the game simply said, do you want to skip this puzzle, especially one with numbers, I would be like, I'm going to skip it. But yeah, yeah. nowadays, I'm glad to see everybody so accepting and willing to say like, yeah, play how you want to play, you know? Right. Man, it's... <sighs> We all know the Dark Souls community. I mean, trust <laughs> yeah. me. When I first started playing that stuff, I stopped playing it because I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Why are you yelling at me? I, this is my first time. That's like if I got in a car and I was learning how to drive and someone was screaming at me the entire time, you got to turn the key on. No kidding. <laughs> I'm going to get to that. Can I please take my time to get to that part? So I, uh, but we, we went back and played it again. And, and, and to your point, um, we had a lot better community that was like very supportive and, and there wasn't a lot of S-talking the second time we tried to, to give it another run-through. So 
um, it felt more comfortable and I felt better. And, and it felt like everybody was being successful when we do something that we stuck on that was hard. Like, you know, the puzzles you do, everybody's like, yes, we did it together, you know, kind of thing. So it's, it's, it's a much different beast in the first, God, it's been what, almost five years now? Yeah. <laughs> it's the, like two, two years, two or three years that I started into it. It was like, ah, I don't want to play these games anymore because these people aren't any fun to play them for. And then, you know, we grew our community and it got a lot, a lot more supportive when it came to stuff like that. So we, we kind of branched out of the retro <laughs> just a teeny weedy bit and played some of the harder stuff that, you know, people come in and poke you, poke fun at you for, for not being very good at. But I'm like, you know, I, <laughs> if I'm going to go play basketball, you're going to go make fun of me right now because I guarantee you I am not going to be good at basketball <laughs> right now. You're going to laugh at me at all the stuff we did. But, you know, I, the more I play it, the better I will eventually get. You know, I'll learn how to play right. Let me do the same thing, you know? Yeah. Um, when I worked in the kitchen, I was, a, I was a cook in a very expensive restaurant, and they felt that the best way to train you was under pressure because then they said it would make diamonds. So they mm -hmm. would scream at you. Sometimes mm -hmm. they would straight up just degrade you as a human being if you got something wrong. They they would literally go to your core and say you were nothing. And they thought that would make Ooh. you a better cook. That would help you cook faster, what? more correctly, get it to the right flavor palette of, of the person, you know, meet their standards and make the owner happy. And it there there was there was a very, very low retention rate in there it's like super low can't, i can't imagine why <laughs> i mean i lasted way. three years that in that like kitchen a environment <laughs> <laughs> yeah I've, we've been there i've i've worked jobs like that where it's just we're just going to belittle everything you do i had a boss that literally told me there's two things he'd tell me he'd say you can do a thousand things right but the minute you do one thing wrong it sets you right back to zero <laughs> And uh, another one was always uh, when I do something, I'd be like, hey, I got this done in record time or whatever. He'd be like, OK, one in a row. And that was it. <laughs> and I was like, you. <laughs> so I, I get it. I the, the pressure to succeed is is enough that I put on myself that nobody else needs to be <laughs> adding to that pressure. Trust me, I'll I'll turn myself into a diamond. <clears throat> now, centrist uh, to your comment. I, I lasted three years because I'm the kind of person that when I go into a job, I get it done. I put in that work. I put in that effort. I struggle as much as I can on that to get through it. And I feel like sometimes that makes me better. But in that environment, I knew I wasn't better because of how they were treating me. I knew I was better because I kept ignoring them. I knew I could clock out at the end of the night and get my paycheck and go home and play games all night, wake up tired, and go back and do day prep, and then cook all night again for 16 hours. So, <laughs> agree. Commendable, absolutely. <laughs> but, yeah, I wouldn't go back. If, if that's your next question, no, I ain't doing that again. <laughs> We're done with that. Let's Good. focus back, though, on you, Chard. Um, streaming, how'd that become a thing for you? When, when did that start? Oh, man. So, I'd like to say... 2018 i started my twitch account in 2017 but uh 20 years about about 20 years wow 2018 so about four years ago um my my very good friend and mod in in real life my my buddy i was telling you about him he lives behind me here um he knows that i've, I've you know like I've, I've been a musician I've, I've tried to get into entertainment in any way shape or form that i can uh, I was in drama in high school and all that other stuff. That's why I'm so dramatic. Um, did the band thing for 12 years uh, as the lead singer and the front man of the team. Um, wanted to get into radio. Went to college to get a communications degree, which I, I did not finish. But I, you know, I did newspaper. I did photography. I did all that stuff. Um, and then I moved away up to where I live now, uh, which I'm much happier up here. And he was like, hey, I know you've been trying to get into all this radio stuff, and I was not finding the job I wanted, or I wasn't getting called back, or I get two calls back, and then they would be like, hey, we're in another direction. So, you know, he was like, why don't you check out this thing called Twitch? And I went, oh, sure, okay. So I pop on, and I'm hanging out. This looks cool as heck, right? So now I have to muster the courage <laughs> to get on a camera because i have to be on a camera i'm a drama kid i have to be on the camera um 
to get on a camera and play games that I'm not good at and prepare for the slings and arrows of how terrible I am at anything, right? So I'm sitting in my living room in Seattle, because that's where I lived at the time. And I went, you know what? There's an app on my Xbox. Screw it. Give this a shot. So I hit go live on my Xbox. Uh, I had the the connects and everything, so it had the camera attached to it and all that stuff. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I played um, Titanfall 2. Ooh. To nobody, <laughs> which was great. <laughs> I was fine with that. I was recording it. You know, I had terrible, I had no lighting. Like, it was pitch black, and I was in my recliner. So basically, this is what you see. Just imagine this with no lights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, without without the lighting here, we'll we'll do this. So this is what it looks like, <laughs> right? And uh, I'm trying to play Titanfall. And I'm just getting my butt handed to me because I am not I am not good at FPSs or third person shoes or anything like that. But I'm having fun doing it. So I'm messing around with it, and you know we started kind of goofing around with that. And then my buddy who introduced me to it said, "Why don't we try Kane and Lynch Dog Days on, and we'll play it together, and we'll just have a good time playing it." And I was like, "All right, we'll do that." Game's terrible. Don't play it. It's awful. It's <laughs> god-awful. It's one of the worst games I've ever played easily. <laughs> so I'm getting the groove. My wife, super supportive woman, is like, why don't we move this into the back room? Now, I lived in, like, kind of a half-studio, not-studio apartment at the time. And we had this, like, offshoot when you walk in. My, my apartment was like a hallway. And you would walk in, <laughs> and I have a room. And I, I use heavy quotes on that because it was literally two walls with no top and a slider door, which was my master bedroom. And then the kitchen was literally outside of those sliders. And then my living room was right in this area, right? It was like 600 square feet. And there was this little offshoot thing in the back that had kind of a, kind of a closet in it, a half-ass closet in it, and then my bathroom. She's all, why don't we put the computer here in this little offshoot thing, and then you can, you can do whatever you want. So I get in there and we set it up and I'm playing Dying Light with my, Ooh, my buddy. His name's his name's Lord Optic. So he and I are goofing around, getting chased by zombies, having a good time. And I decide, hey, let's do some spooky games. Everybody wants to see someone cry on stream, right? That seems to be the way to draw people in is to scare yourself stupid. So the first official I am gonna be a streamer now straight game I played was Dead Space, which is one of my all-time favorite scary games ever. So we did the whole thing. And then it just kind of evolved into this thing. And I had been playing on my Xbox for years. And I was like, I need to get a new computer. I need to do all this stuff. And I, I remember listening to uh, you and, and Shroomy and uh, the other guys talking about how you started. I think it was, it was Vengeance. Yeah, Vengeance was, was with you guys. Was that the guy yeah. that was out today? He said the same thing, that he started with his Xbox. So... I was like, God, I feel so good to hear these people were starting the same way that, you know, I fired up and doing it. And uh, I played on that thing for years and we just put money away. And my wife was just like, all right, we'll save some money. We'll get you dedicated to this. Because I have this thing where I'm like, I want to be a writer. <laughs> I want to be a photographer. I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. And I'll do it for a little while. And then when it doesn't pan out, in my vision of panning out, I'll stop doing it. Or we'll move and I'll just be like, I'm burnt out. I don't want to do that anymore. This is literally the only thing that I've done on my side, my side job, my side hustle that I have stuck with and have really put my, my effort and my, my joy and my time into. And once she's like, I'll give you, I'll give you two years on this. If you still are sticking with it, even with all the equipment you have, then we, we can turn this into a focusable thing. And we will get your which get you going. So I was like, let's all right, that's fair. Two years, that's fair. So I did it. I did it for two years, and I'm still as dedicated now as I was when I started. But I actually, you know, have time frames and commitments and things that I actually people know when to come and see me. It's not like I just go, hey, press live and go. I actually like have been very meticulous about my schedule and whatnot. Um, my work thinks it's goofy, but they support me on it. So when I say, hey, I got to get home and do a podcast for my favorite stream team nemesis Ooh. they go hey is it gonna help you out with with your stream stuff and i said if it does great if it doesn't i don't care i want to be a part of this because i would love to talk with these wonderful people that have invited me to be on this thing and he goes okay go ahead and take off an hour early no worries we'll see you later so 
everything I've done, I'm so serious about it. They know how serious I am about it. And everybody, my my mother of all people and, and father are huge supporters of my stream. Because I played games <coughs> as a kid and they're like, you know, what are you going to do with that? And now my mom hangs out. She chats with people. <laughs> they say hi to her when she's on my chat. You know, my parents are extremely tech savvy, super tech savvy. So they know how to they knew how to do all the all the jargon and stuff that comes with Twitch. So, uh, you know, it just it started into this like I'm playing in this little cube on my couch, you know, trying to see. I'm like, you can see there's an old clip of me looking at my phone in that <laughs> dark room with it backed up because I'm trying to see if I'm actually streaming. Like, I want to make sure it's actually live and working um, to this, to what we have now, where we have all the, you know, the BS in the background, the shiny lights, the, you know, the green screens and all that, that happy horse garbage that comes with it and i would not trade one second of it for the world i have loved being a streamer and i i cannot wait to continue and see what the future brings for me. that's fantastic you know i i keep seeing that folks like you are on nemesis more and more every day man where it's just it's just that passion project a lot of us don't have that ability or luxury of being able to stream full time you know mm -hmm. One day, one day we can one all day. hope, yeah. But <laughs> it's, I just respect the heck out of everybody that comes in after a long day at work and they're just like, you know what, I'm going to press go on this. I'm going to get this achievement done. I'm going to get through this with my friends and I'm just going to have mm -hmm. a good time and bring that to people that don't have to watch us. They they don't have to. They're not required to. Yeah. You know, they're, they're wasting their time on us and – Right. I'd like to say we're all very grateful for it. Like coming to a podcast on a Thursday night. Thank you, by the way. Much love. Much love. Thank you so much. <laughs> Agreed. I mean, we, yeah, these people have all worked the same hours or longer or not. And and I, I get emails from people that work night shift that are like, hey, where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, get, I'm getting there. Calm down. I'll be there in a minute. Good God. They're like, listen, it's my only day off. I'm going to watch you. Okay. okay. All right, dude, I'll be there in a second. Please calm, calm down. I'll be there in a minute. But I, I mean, I get that. I get things like that all the time. And it's it's crazy. I'm James. We are people playing video games on a computer. Like, right. <laughs> I did not imagine this being to what the level that it has become. And I am I am so honored, to be honest with you. I am I am humbled constantly by the people that come in and sit down after a long day's work and want to see me curse like a sailor <laughs> at a pixelated game that I'm clearly <laughs> not very good at. But for some reason, they stay the full four to five hours that we run this stupid show <laughs> and support it and tell people about it. And hey, it's just amazing to me that 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 happens. I mean, you know, who, who knows? In three years, I'll be, I could be playing to myself in my bedroom and say, you know what? We've done enough. But I, I just didn't think that even after four years, it's just like, I still got the same people coming and hanging out. I still got the same mods that are coming and supporting me. We still have the same inside jokes, you know, about Final Fantasy VIII, which we won't get into that because that will take <laughs> up another hour of this podcast and we don't have that kind of time or patience to deal with that. But it's just like, I don't know. It's, I find, I'm a social guy. I like to consider myself pretty social dude, but I don't, I have, I have a few friends up here, right? You know, that we go out and hang out with every now and then, but I'm a, I'm a homebody. I, I come home from work. My wife is my best friend. We've been together for forever, even dating and married. And, and we still love to hang out with each other. So it's like, I'm not, I don't want to get away from anything. When I come home, I get to hang out with my wife. We get to kick it and do whatever. So when I get on here, it's like I'm hanging out with all my close friends on here and, and we get all these stupid little inside jokes. I've got friends in frickin' New Zealand. You know, I got people <laughs> that, that I talk to daily in Europe. I got people that are in Colorado. I got people that are, in, and I've never physically met these people, but I feel closer to them than half the people that I grew up with and talked to way back when, you know what I mean? It's it's insane what's out there, and 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 as much as I f sometimes frown on the internet for what it does and all the all the garbage that it can spew out from time to time, it without it I wouldn't have the people that I have, and now you guys on top of that, 
I was talking to you about it before. This team has been absolutely the most welcoming environment I've ever been in. And I'm not even, I'm not tooting the horn because I'm wearing the nemesis hat. We're on the podcast, (laughs) but I, from day one, when the people that run this thing talk to you as an individual and say hi and ask how you're doing, these people have a business to run and jobs on top of that. And they still take the time out of their day to say, hey, (coughs) how are you today? I hope you're doing well. Have a wonderful morning. Hey, let's talk about this new game and get together and play it as a team. Yo, we playing some retro. Let's come and hang out with 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 you guys. Let's go. Let's go watch James play Fallout. Let's go watch Shroomy play retro, and let's watch Charmuck play RPGs and get mad about it all day. <laughs> let's go see Hobbs do do Monster Hunter. Like the the group gets around and hangs out, and and you guys come in and say hi, and and I love seeing the emotes come up in my chat when you guys come in or when Hobbs comes in or whatever. I love it, and it's and it feels like I don't feel like I just joined a place that has a name and i'm just in it i mean i do not twitter i'm not a twitter guy but since i've joined nemesis apparently i'm a twitter guy now because that's (laughs) all i do is check on nemesis i check on on advanced gg i check on you guys i get secret i get dms from you know from another world and from from choodles and from all you guys checking in and maz you know the guy that runs the thing is talking to us like (laughs) <laughs> like we've been there forever and I, I haven't even been on the team that long, but it feels like I've been part of this team forever. And that's how welcoming you guys are. It's I, I love this team. Like there's no, <laughs> I'm not going to cover it up. This, I am so pumped to be part of Nemesis and I cannot wait to see where this team goes and what the future is and, and to be along for the ride. Cause I'll tell you what, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. <clears throat> it's going to be so much fun. Like, I, there are projects I've been privy to know about that are coming up. That's going to be really exciting for oh, people of I different wanna know, categories. I want to know about them all. Ugh, I know. I wish <laughs> I, I could like share. Waiting, I want to know. <laughs> I, I want to share with everyone, but you know, in due time, because you know, one of the biggest misconceptions about Nemesis is that it's an esports organization. So people think mainly, okay, shooters. You know, they have a championship right. winning for honor team in Europe. Things like that. No, we cater, well, we're trying to cater to everyone from retro to RPGs to horror games to Minecraft, anything and everything. If you're a pro at it and you want to shine, Nemesis is going to make a home for you to do that. They're going to give you Even your own Even if you're like room. me and not a pro at it. <laughs> I got no place else to go, man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you in. We'll put you in a warm bed, get you some nice food. We'll, we'll chat you up, and uh, I actually want to tell on myself a little bit here because when I first joined Nemesis, uh, Koizumi and uh, Shrum were like two of the first people to start rating me and talking to me, but I started getting some DMs from this guy. He was just chatting me up and noticed I liked to fall out and Elder Scrolls and just a bunch of different RPGs and just like kept DMing me, like sending me like his collection of awesome stuff on, on his wall, on his shelves. And it was like, Hey, have you tried this in this game? And I'm like, just who the heck is this? Why are they so chatting me up? Like I've never, uh, like, I, like I've always been a part of their life. And it turned out it, it was, uh, our dear Maz just like out of nowhere. It's like, who's this Maz guy on the team? And then I started looking around I was like, this guy owns the place. Hey, yeah, he's the dude. <laughs> like, he's the guy. Yeah, same. same. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing, like, you know, just getting the, to know the collection he's got. And then, you know, we pop over to Instill, who's always just like saying, yeah, come play a game with me. Stop saying you, you're busy. You're not busy. Come play. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just all these different people. And then we got our uh, – our doctor of hunting monsters, you know, he he's always down to like invite people to to go on these guided hunt tours and teach you properly how to take down a Rathalos, I believe. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, these I other could, wing I could critters. Use some training on that. I get. I I can't. I can't even take down a cat. I I don't even know <laughs> what how he plays that game so effortlessly. It's just like makes my eyes cross. It, it's incredible to watch. Yeah, he makes it look so darn easy. And then, you know, we just got we got our Tarkov side of things. And those people, you just have to send them hearts, okay, y'all? Uh, if you see any of the Nemesis <laughs> team members playing Tarkov, yeah. send them GGs, send them love, yeah. 
tell them they are troopers because they suffer the most out of all of us. They play one of the most unforgiving games, the mo- one of the most unforgiving games in every single way. You die, you lose your items forever. Sometimes you can do an insurance thing and maybe get your guns back or other items back, but more than likely you're going to lose them because as soon as someone takes you out, they're taking your stuff. And then there's just, there's no going back. And then what happens is when they're at the top of their game, they have all their money. You know what happens? The game says, oh, we're going to wipe everything out. You're going to start from square one. Have fun. (laughs) Nope. And they do this every season. (laughs) <laughs> the Torkov is a horror game in single player mode. You're not wrong, Merv. Not, not wrong at all. It's horrifying. I, I'm a pack rat, like by nature. I have a hard time getting rid of anything in game. I'll tell you what. We we play RPGs, yeah, and they go. You go to the end, and there's people like use this potion to be like, no, I need it for later. It's a running joke amongst RPG streamers where they're like, no, I might need that for later. I'm gonna hold on to it. And you beat the game, and you never used it. Right? Because you, you're like, I might need it for later. And you're at the end credits. I've had people yell at me, be like, there's nothing after this. Use the freaking thing. You have to use it. You're going to die. And I go, no, I need it for the credits or something. So having Tarkov e- el- eliminate all my hard work. Yeah, thank, no, thank you. I'm good. I'm good. I'll, I'll play it one time. And then on the first wipe, I'll be like, well, this is fun. I'm going to go back to my retro now. I'm over it. <clears throat> Yeah, so just remember, if you see a Tarkov player out there, give them a hug. Tell them, tell them there's a tell better them. way, but if they refuse that better way, then just, just keep their chin up when they play Tarkov because they like the punishment. They they like knowing at the end of the day the game does not value them. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be okay, guys. It's going to be okay. <laughs> and yes, I know I sold the game really well, I'm actually underselling it. It's it's way worse than it sounds. <laughs> He's not wrong. He's not wrong. I know I know perfectly pleasant people that play that game and they are not pleasant after they done <laughs> playing that game. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of there's there's a lot of angry people, you know, after the game. They they chill out eventually, but man, for those three hours they just want to be angry. I guess it helps whatever. So, you know, good for them. <laughs> crazy i can't i can't do it i'm a masochist when i play but not to that level absolutely not to that level at least in dark souls i can go find my stuff hopefully and Mm -hmm. get it back but i know where it is i know where it's always at oh yeah so shard outside of gaming do you have any hobbies well i mentioned my podcast that i do with a group of friends of mine that we do do that called press b to cancel Mm -hmm. where Um, where can people catch that uh youtube you can find it on youtube um it's just like it sounds press b to cancel uh it's a retro inspired podcast but we talk about all kinds of stuff we, we i mean we hang around the retro community obviously but we like i said we did a uh an episode on tunic that was a really interesting game um there's i i talk religiously about elden ring when it first came out so that was kind of my hang up um so stuff like that so if you guys are interested in 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 hearing a, a bunch of goobers talk about retro and, and gaming like stuff we do that i'm a, i'm a big sports seattle sports fan um i love my seahawks football um i love my mariners baseball uh the hockey team that came in last year i absolutely love hockey so i try to catch as many games as i can i've i've really kind of turned out i used to be a fanatic like <laughs> sports memorabilia all over the room like i might as well have a fat head on my freaking closet door i don't but i should have um big time but then when i got when the streaming thing got a little bit more more prevalent and i i had a schedule and all that stuff it took precedence over me sitting down for what eight hours watching football all day so instead i sit down for eight hours and i play video games all day you know totally right trade-off you know super healthy um but um i do that and then i work and i spend i go out on adventures with my wife and my i'm very close to my family they're up visiting right now so we're going to go on a four hour drive tomorrow and go look at the coast and look at the oh, water wow. and stuff that place that we've never been to before. Um, and I like to travel. I like to go on vacations, which I am due for one, but um, 
I like to, I just like in my RPGs, I like to explore in real life. I like to look at things. I love ghost hunting shows. I am an idiot for ghost hunting shows. Ghost adventures. <laughs> I don't care if it's real or fake. I don't care. I care not. It gets the, it elicits the just right response out of me. And uh, I'm in, I've actually met uh, two of the guys a couple times from the show uh, when they were just out and about. And uh, I am absolutely obsessed with that show. Um, so stuff like that. Ghosts are great, yes. Um, <laughs> which in turn takes me to like playing Phasmophobia and all the spooky games that I play on stream. We have a, uh, I have a group of friends. We do. It's called Retro's Most Haunted, and we play scary games on Saturday nights. Ooh. That I run it, but it's still my group of friends, and we play all these things together. I have a VR set that. I have to do Devour, which is one of the scariest games I've played oh my uh, gosh, in VR yes. for uh, for somebody who met a goal that I was trying to reach. So October, if you want to see me cry in a VR set, um, that'll, be, that'll <laughs> be the best time to come and catch that. So. <clears throat> That is fantastic. You know, I'm, I might I might have something to talk to you about horror wise later then. So you know, I'll, we'll we'll keep you posted we'll on talk. that. Yeah, we'll yeah, we're, we'll we're gonna talk we'll on talk. that. Right. You know, so we got a few minutes left. Do you got anything you want to plug? Where can people find you and all your great content? Um, you can find a lot of my a lot of my retro stuff is on Twitch. Um, and then of course the spooky stuff is on um, Retro's Most Haunted. Um, I do more modern esque type playthroughs on YouTube, but YouTube's actually more of a data dump for me. So I try to take, cause you know, Twitch doesn't keep the VODs, excuse me, keeps the VODs forever. So, you know, I try to put all that stuff over and everybody likes to see me cry and play scary games. So I put a lot <laughs> of that stuff over on Twitch. You can, if you didn't get enough of me doing it the first time, you can go back and watch it as many times as you want on there. Um, press me to cancel the podcast with my group of friends. Go check them out on YouTube. Check us out there. Um, uh, and then any social media, cause I'm a giant, um, drama queen on, <laughs> on any social media content you could find me and, and chat me up there. Um, I am very, very much the type of person that wants to respond to people that talk to me. So, you know, as long as it's not like, Hey, if you need graphics design done, I will, I will respond to you pretty much more quickly. James laughs because he knows. Yeah. Um, hey, I got a new follow. Oh, it's GFX Design. Great. Um, <laughs> uh, the same thing with my chat. I, I try very hard to to talk with the people in my chat because I feel that as a streamer, I, I want to have a connection with you guys. Um, so if you like if you like people raging at RPGs, we're currently doing a 200% playthrough of Earthbound, which is oh. the first time I've ever played Earthbound, and I love it so far. <laughs> Um, and if you want to talk about the worst Final Fantasy ever created, Final mm. Fantasy VIII, you're welcome to do that with me. Um, if Sinistar doesn't ban you out because he has some kind of trigger, he has a really itchy trigger finger when it comes to anything Final Fantasy VIII related. I love him for it. <laughs> um, and that's about it, man. I October's coming up, so I'm all about the scary games. We're coming up here real quick, mm. and we got some real spooky stuff we're going to try out here in the in the very near future. So. Um, if you're interested in any of those things, uh, please check us out. Check me out. Check us out. Check out James, too. If my community that's here, if you're not, I'm going to give you a plug, bud. Ooh, um, okay. Check out check out my dude, James Autumn, here. He's he's an excellent streamer. He's a fun guy to hang out with. He is a, a Fallout aficionado. He's playing uh, Fallout 76, amongst other things. Um, and he's just, he's just a killer, chill dude to hang out with. He's a musician, very talented one. I've heard him play. Um, Check him out. Give him a follow out once once you leave Nemesis. First of all, follow the Nemesis channel. Then, when you're done here, go to James' channel and follow him and give him love. Because without him, today would not be possible. Or any of the other fun stuff that we've done. So I, I've really gravitated towards James um, on the on the chatting. He's a very welcoming, very warm environment person. So go give him some love on Twitter, on Instagram, on all the other sites that are out there and uh and follow him because he is also extremely entertaining and a good dude very good dude well thank you so much oh my god maz we should hire this guy maz <laughs> maz we gotta talk about this later okay well, dang thank you so much jared that was that was beautiful <laughs> absolutely no I, you know we're we're a team you know there's <laughs> i i everybody wants the purple check mark me me i really want that purple check mark but it's not about who i have to 
to roll with to get the, a rollover to get there. It's who can we take with us, right? It's we're all in this together. We're a team. We're friends. We're we're a family here. Uh, and and I and I don't take I don't say Nemesis is a family lightly. I mean it. I have not been in this team that long. And like you said earlier, I feel like I've been here for ten years. I feel like I walk in the door and this is like Cheers, and everybody's like Charmok, you know, like <laughs> holy sh what. <laughs> Hi, everyone. This is so welcoming in here, you know, and it's not fake. It's not anybody's chat I go into, Instills, James, Hobbs, anybody's chat I pop into, they're like, they immediately say hello. They immediately welcome you in. And and some of these people are doing some really crazy stuff. Like Hobbs is fighting monsters, Instills playing Torkov. So, of course, I've, you know, got to give that guy some love because yeah. that's, that's some craziness right there. <laughs> But everybody's super nice. They like all your stuff on Twitter. You know, I could be like, hey, I found a I found a quarter on the ground. Huzzah. And then there'll be like <laughs> 20 likes from you guys. You know, it's so <laughs> it's so cool to be like, hey, these guys actually give a crap that I found a quarter on the ground. You know, it's it is it is absolutely a family. And I and I feel that even though, you know, w w you're interviewing me and all that stuff, we're still a team. And and I want. I want everybody to get to their dreams. I mean, Instel quotes it all the time on, on every morning I wake up to Instel with some kind of great proverb or great supportive quote from somewhere where it's like, you know what? I can take the day on. I can, I can get out of bed and do this stuff today. And I, and I want to be part of that group of people that is successful as a unit, not as this one person got into Nemesis and everybody raided him and now he's partner and now peace out, I'm out. I don't want that. I want, I want everybody to come along for the ride. I want you to all enjoy the ride. You get your goals. I get my goals. You know, everybody. Doc plays, gets his hobs, gets his goals. We all get our goals, and we did it as a team. I'm a huge team player. I love that aspect of of Twitch. And you, you know, like I said, I've been very trepidatious about certain things because I'm naive, and I trust too quickly. So I come in and you get burned, like right off the bat, you get burned <laughs> real hard. And and that has not happened even remotely. There's not even been a single red flag where I've been like, mm, no about this. It's been phenomenal. So thank you. I want to thank Maz. I want to thank you. I want to thank Instill. And I especially want to thank Shroomy or Shrum, those with the new name, for for helping me get into this and join this family and and realize that there's some good people out there that we're all chasing the same dream. And I cannot, absolutely cannot wait to ride the wave with everybody in Nemesis, wherever this is going to go. Even if we all, even if Maz calls us all up and goes, Hey, grab your shovels. We're going to go dig ditches. <laughs> I'll get my camera. Let's, let's go dig ditches. I'm in. That sounds like a wonderful idea. I, Don't I will give you my 100%. ideas. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. So no joke about the radio show with Shrum and Crunk. Man, let's, let's go. He's got so Let's much go. planned, and uh, I'm, yeah. man, yeah, I, I want to give out a quick plug to our upcoming shows. We do have coming uh, this Sunday. We do have Jester's Court Dungeons and Dragons session. I think they're doing the Kingdom Heart themes right now, so it's really fun. If you like Kingdom Hearts, you like Dungeons and Dragons, go check them out. They are a fun group. Uh, one of our uh, users, uh, Ivy, is in here. She is a part of that really beautiful group, so definitely check them out. Beyond Nemesis every Monday, they do gaming topics, news, all that kind of stuff around the streamer slash gaming culture, so you definitely want to check that out with Mayor Reynolds and Jedi. Tuesday, we have Cup of Robots, who does a slew of just, like, trivia games. And sometimes Nemesis will throw in a couple little, little freebies there, little giveaway things. So there's some incentive to join those and have fun with the trivia night with Cup of Robots. Then we're back to Thursdays with me, usually Chase. Again, we know we want to send out our love to Chase, who's dealing with a family medical emergency. Um, everything is fine so far on that, but still send out the love. He couldn't be here tonight. It kind of a last minute thing. So we understand and we love him. So definitely want to share that. But sadly we do got to get ourselves going Chard, and we're going to have you back, man. We're going to have you back. We're going to have you do some stuff with us. It's going to be fun. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Boy. Don't, don't tell me that. I'm, I'm already ready to go. Let's we're going to go. put you to work, man. I mean, we're going to have a great time. 
Heck yeah. We're going to dig ditches. I'm ready to go dig ditches. Let's go. Now, I mentioned it before, y'all, but we're going to go send a raid over to Mayor Reynolds, who I believe is playing Apex Legends right now. want to thank y'all yet again. Follow us all on the socials. You can find me at the James Autumn on Instagram and on Twitter, James Autumn on Twitch. Thank you guys yet again. Make sure you go follow Chard on all of his socials as well. And uh, yeah, thank you guys yet again. Much love, and we will talk soon. Have a great night. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on here. Thank you, everybody, for coming and hanging out. We will see you again soon. Thank you so much. Much love.